I wonder how many heroes we meet in a given day and have no idea. We brush by them in the street. The people of God who face tremendous difficulties and who are overcomers through the grace that God gives them. In John 16, 33, the Lord Jesus said, These things I've spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. We read that the early apostles, as they went from place to place, they not only preached the gospel, not only discipled the new believers, but we read they confirmed the souls of the disciples and exhorted them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So, as we think about tribulation, we not only accept it as sort of a negative but necessary influence in the sinful world, Paul says we go farther than that. He writes to the Romans in chapter 5, we glory in tribulations also. Now the word glory here doesn't mean to praise it or to adore it. It has a different meaning. It means here to have confidence in. We have confidence that our tribulations are going to work endurance or patience in our lives. And that endurance is going to also work experience. In other words, the proof that we're genuine believers will be manifested as we overcome. A few weeks ago, I felt led to call a friend of ours, a teacher in the area, found out that she was going through a very difficult time. Her husband was in the last days of life. He was dying of cancer, and she had some specific needs, and we were able to help her. Well, just a few days ago, I was in her town, and I called and said, could I take her out for supper? And as we sat there in the restaurant, I said, would you mind giving me a little window into your life? I'd like to know more about you. Uh, she's just a radiant believer. Well, they grew up in a poor black home in a nearby town. And when she was five years old, she and her brother were out playing. And she fell and broke her right arm. The doctor who put the cast on put it on too tight. And she ended up getting gangrene, and they had to remove her hand from her wrist upwards and left her in this situation. At five years of age, she was right-handed. The following year was the first year in Mississippi that parents were allowed to choose where their children would go, either to the, quote, black school or, quote, white school. And her mother decided, she said, you'll get a better education at the white school. I'm going to send you there. When she arrived, a little five-year-old girl, a little black girl with a missing dominant hand, she discovered she was the only black child in the school. She said many of the students and many of the teachers treated her very badly, told her where she ought to be, she was so disheartened, but there was one teacher, her homeroom teacher, who cared about her and spent time diligently teaching her how to learn to write again with her left hand and was so kind and patient towards her that she placed in the heart of this little girl a longing herself to be a teacher. And she persisted through these tremendous obstacles until she graduated as a teacher. And she moved to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where she taught in the public school. She married, had two children, and then discovered that her husband had prostate cancer and went through the difficult experience of slowly letting go as she cared for that dear man until the day he died. Well, sometime later, a friend from Mississippi who knew her in childhood asked her sister, could I correspond with your sister? And eventually what they fell in love and they got married. He was a godly Christian man, had a real heart for the Lord. And um, it wasn't too long into the marriage that she began to see telltale signs. 
and went to him and said, I think you have prostate cancer. And sure enough, that was the case. And so her second husband, through 13 years of fighting against that cancer, eventually succumbed to it just a few weeks ago. This dear lady, radiant with the beauty of Christ, still thinking about others, wants to go back to school so she can start a Christian club for the children in the school where she teaches. In the world you shall have tribulation, said the Lord Jesus, but in me you may have peace. Now, tribulation is a given. You shall have it. It's not a given that we have peace in the circumstances of life. It's only true when we cast our care on him, when we look to the Lord in these daily experiences, these trying experiences, these seemingly overwhelming experiences, and when we feel overwhelmed, we say, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. This dear lady in my eyes is a hero, and she's looked to the rock that is higher than she is, and that's why she has stability and joy and peace, even in the midst of these difficult times, because she has learned the secret of having confidence even in our troubles, because our troubles eventually end with the love of God being poured out through our lives into the lives of needy people around us. These things said Jesus, I've spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but cheer up, I have overcome the world.